Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So today I'm going to be looking at a rather unique battery. It's a new offering from Renogy. Now Renogy is a pretty popular brand. I've purchased many of their solar panels over the years, working fine. I bought one of their DC to DC chargers to charge my batteries in my rig off my truck. It's been working fine for years. And last year I reviewed their 400 watt solar panel and used it on our boat and it performed well. So they offered, if I wanted to have a look at this for you, this was sent out to me no charge as a review sample, just as a disclaimer. But uh, what really interested me about it, and I thought maybe it was worthwhile taking a look at, was the size. Um, it's one of the smallest 100 amp hour lithium batteries on the market. Um, measurements are right around 9 by 6 by 9, so 9, 6, and then nine up to the top of the the studs here so very mini mini sized battery but also on top of that it has uh, heating pads inside it so i thought people that are using smaller rvs where space is a consideration like say truck campers for instance a lot of times their battery bays are really small and a lot of times they're using that out in the winter for winter camping or small trailers or vans that sort of thing so what I'm gonna do is we'll do a, a couple tests I'm gonna put it in my freezer overnight and cool it down to deep freeze temperatures and then hook it up and see how long it takes um, those pads to to recover the battery enough to start charging and also I'll do a max discharge tests it says 100 amps this is max discharge and then it can surge over that up to 300 amps for 10 seconds. Um, a couple of other things here. It says 10 year lifespan. It says top grade cells, 5,000 plus cycles. So I'm actually going to do, after I do a few tests, I'm going to do a tear down of this battery. And we can see the build quality inside and see how those heating pads are arranged. Just as a comparison in size, this is another battery that claims to be very uh, small as well but you can see this battery makes that one look large <laughs> the other thing is the weight is pretty pretty light on this i think it's down to about 21 pounds so very lightweight and compact they call it the mini core self-heating the only thing it doesn't have is any uh, Bluetooth capability, so there's no, no app for it to monitor it with. So first, since it's a heated battery, I'm going to do a low temperature test. I've left it in this freezer overnight. Um, the freezer's reading about minus 3 Fahrenheit. So we'll pull it out and hook a charger up to it and see if the the heater pads in there are working. They're supposed to draw about 110 watts. Let's try a discharge test. It should be able to discharge at this temperature. Yep. Seems to work no problem. Hook up a charger now. Okay, charger hooked up. Turn her on. 14.6 volts, 7.8 amps. So now that should be heating up the battery inside. Once it reaches temperature, this is a 40 amp charger, we should see that jump up to 40 amps. So I'll just let it go. Yeah, so this is putting out 14.6 volts. This is drawing 7.6 amps. Amps times volts equals watts. If you do the math, it's 110 watts, which is what the heating pads in here are rated for. Okay, there we go. Bounced up to 36. And right around 20 minutes. So it went from low deep freeze temperature, minus 3 Fahrenheit. <coughs> Must have heated the battery up past freezing 32 Fahrenheit and then inside a switch turned on and started ch charging of the lithium cells so working as advertised 
So before I do a tear down on the battery, I'd just like to test the max discharge rate. It says it should be able to handle 100 amps and even more for up to 10 seconds. So I'll just use my inverter here and a heat gun. And I have a little uh, ammeter hooked up to it. Here we go, it's about 40 amps. Around bouncing to 80 there. There we go. So right around getting close to 100. Seems to handle that no problem. Just gonna try. Raising it up a bit. This should go over a hundred now. There we go. And we'll go the full max on the heat gun. So that should cause it to shut down in around 10 seconds. I'm on 100 and, uh, yep. So, high discharge shutdown seems to work properly. Now that I've done the testing, I'm going to do the teardown. One thing I like is the, the manual. It's one of the best manuals I've come across for these type of batteries. Lots of information and lots of information on to how properly to hook it up, including fusing, using bus bars when you're using multiple of them, how to do uh, parallel and series connections. They really go in depth with it, so that's kind of nice. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get the top off. Usually I've been successful on these battery re reviews. I don't really have to saw it apart so I can still make it useful. But I, I find if I use a hive tool, and if I can get in into that seam there, usually I'll cut along there with a, with a, a box cutter blade, kind of open it up and I can get in here. And with a hammer, I can kind of hammer across and uh, able to get rid, pop the glue that they use usually. This one is uh, rated for some waterproofing. So uh, we'll see how they've done that as well. Okay, managed to get the lid off without destroying it. Give you a look at the, how the terminals are set up there. Looks like they use paralleled 8 gauge wiring to the ter battery terminals. You can see these wires, white and black, look like they're for the the heating pads you can see right there the end of a heating pad there and the end there and on the BMS I can see right there a uh, temperature sensor wire and the balance wires looks like the batteries are set in sideways I do notice this one is bent a little bit I guess when they torque that up, they kind of bent it a little bit probably made of aluminum so anyway I'm gonna peel off the, the battery management system board here and try to get this out see well actually maybe I can get the whole thing out and we can get a look at the cells see if we can get a code off them see what they are they say they're grade A plus cells they seem to use a lot of this uh, strapping to hold everything in place.
but it's amazing how they've uh, got that all in there. Very compact. So it seems that maybe the cells are glued at the bottom. It seems to be really hard to get them loose, so I'm going to peel it apart more, pull the BMS off, all the wiring off. I wouldn't say this battery is very serviceable, so it's basically send it back to Renogy if anything goes wrong. You can see on the positive lead, I don't like how many connectors they have stacked on one terminal there. Anyway, I'll keep going. So, it looks like the BMS is just kind of stuck on there. The wires are kind of zip tied on the corner, so everything's kind of held in place with tape and and glue. Let's see if I can get that off. There we go. So it looks like it's just stuck to this big foam pad on top of this fiber board, which is holding the cells together down there. So here it says H, so that's the heater sensor right there, I guess. Temperature sensor, looks like. It does say 100 amps there on the BMS board. See the heating pad wiring here. They just have some spade connectors that they covered in some uh, shrink tubing. There's the other side of them. Go to ring connectors to the BMS board. So I don't know, you could develop bad connections in there, I guess. Well, Looks like they must have glued those cells to the bottom. So I'm lifting with a lot of force and I can't get it to break free. Get those cells out of there. Okay, got her back together and I charged it up 100% with this uh, lithium battery charger. Now I'm just going to do a test, run a heater load. It'll be pretty close to 50 amps and we'll just let it go and see how long it. Uh, takes to uh, run it down at that amperage. I guessed him at about two hours. There we go. So it's outputting 47.3 amps. I've done this test with quite a few different uh, 100 amp hour batteries and if they have decent capacity they should they should last pretty close to two hours before they're exhausted and my uh, inverter goes into shutdown. Not really a scientific lab test of the capacity, but it's kind of more of a real-world type test. Okay, so we just hit the two-hour mark. Still, voltage is actually still up at 12.4. So basically, it's performing as well as any of the other premium batteries I've tested using this method. So I'm happy with its uh, capacity. So my final thoughts about it, if you really have a problem with space and you need a really small, compact battery, this may be worth it to you, especially if you also need the low temperature functionality. Other than that, it has, you know, drawbacks to it. Um, everything is crammed inside that battery and they looks like they weren't really able to uh, build much structure in there where they would you know screw things together it's all kind of tape and fiberboard which is a drawback also it's not very serviceable if anything goes wrong it's basically either disposable or it's going to be sent back to Renogy to be worked on and also it doesn't have any Bluetooth app so there you go till next time Ray from Love Your RV and Boat cheers guys